Asimov talked about the laws of robotics more than 50 years ago. Can we learn something from them? This even AI. That's a, that's that's a huge question. But let me let me show you two books here. So uh, Charles Strauss Accelerando is a book about the singularity. It's the point where artificial intelligence matches and surpasses human intelligence, and we go into a new era of, of perhaps transferring ourselves into a computer substrate, and that makes it possible for us to travel to the stars and so on. Are we even human if we have copied ourselves into an AI? Who are we then? I'm seeing it as science reality, not science fiction anymore. Uh, and I do believe that the world in, 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 a, in a more uh, uh, escalating state actually look back and saying science fiction, yeah. Uh, it becomes more and more of science reality. Take for example, I watch a lot of Star Trek and James Bond when I was little. My dad, for instance, not in any way lack of vision, said that I don't understand why you keep looking at that science fiction because there will no ever time in time will be a device that have a camera or a, a platform that you can video chat on everything. He didn't believe in that. He's, it, it was science fiction. Today, we have carrying around devices that have more capacity and the, the, the ground control in 1969 in the lunar lander. I mean, they had a two megabyte capacity. Uh, who has a phone that has lower capacity than two megabytes today. Yeah, or a watch. Or a watch. Um, so the loss of robotics is getting more and more science reality that we need probably more simple rules to, to, to regulate how the artificial intelligence, how the augmented reality is going to be used into privacy to the subjects that lives in the Internet of Things because those two worlds are migrating into one. I'm, I'm most certain to that. Is it possible that that world will come to be before I die? Probably not. But I have seen the development since 1969 up to date, to 2019. It has gone in a pace that is frighteningly fast and it's going faster by the minute. I think the future is very different from, from, uh, from what's in the books. Uh, for instance, this book uh, is a trilogy uh, about um, a ship called uh, Justice uh, and Lecky. So this book is about an artificial intelligence ship where they, anyone who loses in war against the ship are taken on board as crew. And, and th then the artificial intelligence takes over their, their consciousness, like the opposite of the other book. In the other book we had the, the people moving into the AI. In this case it's AI moving into the people. So. Um, Anyway, the ship is destroyed and all what's left is a human. But this human has been taken over by the AI, so it's like a, a holographic shard of, the, of the, this huge ship. So can we learn something from this at least? We can learn that, that two books next to each other on the shelf can have opposite views on, on even what it is. I mean, is it people or is it machines? Is it machines or people? Opinion, the digitalization that we have today yep. that will have a huge impact on society and how the national state will not be there anymore, more or less. I believe that we need to actually, and I know that some government actually is is is, is analyzing this or, or, or having a debate internally about this. What if scenario United States as such as a country as a sovereign state doesn't exist it's just a domain in 50 years I think it is a very intriguing thought because it opens up the possibilities of actually being one humankind one human race actually will it be still wars and everything absolutely we, we are fighting a cyber war as we speak but it it's just another phase of human evolution. So I do think that there are states, probably not everyone, but there are states or regions that is domains rather than sovereign states. 
Uh, I have an example from uh, three years ago at a telco in Europe. They wanted to store everything about the customer and their calls, mm -hmm. and who they call, where they did the mobile calls, etc., mm -hmm. in a data like. Mm -hmm. And I question that and say, is that a good idea mm -hmm. to have identifiable mm -hmm. information? Mm -hmm. They want to use a lot of. BI mm. to get pattern and things like that. Mm -hmm. So that, that's a challenge. There, are, there might be legal reasons, of course. The police would like to have this mm. information for some reason or not, and that might be the in, in, in that's another challenge. That's another challenge, but that's an incentive to actually store this information. Yeah. And yes and no. Uh, but that could also be misused, pretend, depending on who's allowed to access this. So you see EU as European Union, that is more or less a domain. In 50 years or, or, or less or more. Absolutely. Yeah. Because it's not a sovereign state either today. The main principle of the EU is, is this freedom of movement and, and, and a lot of other things. But the freedom of movement is not seen to the, to the, uh, to the land mass as such. It's, it's also that you digitized can access and freedom of movement yeah. in the digital world. Um, the debate in, in GDPR, whether your information is within the EU ESS or outside the EU ESS, it is, uh, to me, very important, but also in the same fashion abundant. Because is there such a thing as outside the EU ESS seen to domain-wise in the 50 years? Right now, it's a very important issue to, to actually protect the privacy. But what about privacy in 10 years, 20 years, and 50 years? We have quite a number of examples uh, when it comes to piracy. And of course, piracy is wrong, but still, the legal process surrounding it is challenging. And where you see that due to different type of legislation, uh, telcos have to store information of who was visiting which site when. Yeah. And those private companies are looking at what would be the user account or the users that access this information. They find the IP and look at, and then they go to the different type of telcos and ask who had this IP when. Yeah. And that will pinpoint to the router at home. And then depends on who has access to this information. And normally, I would say it's a family. Yes, privacy is a huge factor, but I think that when we come to one, we need laws, simple laws that act like the glue be between the, the behaviors and attitudes and, 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 and the, the principles as such and the data touch board. Anyway, that point of view, if you have an open network that someone else could ac access, those private companies would still hunt you and tell you uh, that you need to pay this amount of money. And if you don't do it, they call in there a lot of lawyers and there could be a lot of cost for you. So normally you are forced to pay this amount of money. This process today takes about one year to get out all this information. So some of the uh, uh, vendors, the telco vendors, actually they only store this information for 24 hours uh, and then they because they scrap it. Then they scrap it. So beside the information they need for the police, but only police yeah. could access to that. So they scrap it. So meaning that when those private companies come to ask for this information, it's not available anymore. Uh, however, with AI, it will be possible for them to start moving a lot faster to get this type of information. Yeah. And it's a, it's a problem. Those who create different type of applications, movies and everything, of course, it should pay, be paid for their work. And so we should not allow privacy. The problem is when the private companies start suing you, more or less like the American practice, and there's a lot of cost. You know, the, the cost of copying the uh, movie is quite low. I think it's about 25,000 Swedish krona or something. Mm -hmm. uh, and they only force you to pay 5,000 Swedish krona mm -hmm. if you agree to it. But the legal cost yeah. can amount to 100,000 Swedish krona, and that, that can't be covered by any type of insurance for a private person that you could afford. Yeah. So that, that's a challenge where e AI could be misused. I don't see it now, uh, but there is a possibility of it. So any, any type of information could be highly, uh, quickly uh, anal uh, analyzed and be used in different type of ways. So that would always be the challenge.
So it's interesting to see what's happening in the future. We're living in a very interesting time. And I believe that seen to many of us that deals with GDPR um, as a subject matter expert in digital uh, security and privacy, I'm awaiting the, the first rulings, actually the first rulings that, that will make it or break it for a lot of companies seen to GDPR. The EPR, the e-privacy regulations around the corner, NIST is in effect. Um, the interesting to me is to see how the rulings is and how they affect everyday life. Because, as I said, the, the, the borders between where your work life and privacy work, that has been blurred out. So what happens in regulation and in courting and rulings on a higher level affects even the grassroots level today. So that will be the most interesting aspect. Where does the privacy end and starts seen to regulation? We have, uh, we have talked about unethical behavior from companies and using AI. But what about criminals? Can they also use these tools? They not only can, they do. They, they are in the forefront. There's so much money in cybercrime today that I can't even name the figure. I think it's what I think about 2.1 trillions a year. I heard so 20 zero or something. Uh, it's a really large number. So they are actively using this type of information to extract. But they are mainly finding ways of threatening you because there's a lot of money in trying to expose different type of information. The challenge would be that today we see uh, th there's one scam going around where they use uh, information of old hacks or username and password. And most people haven't changed their password, so they actually send you a mail with, this is your username, this is your password, and I've activated your webcam and I saw what you did, your dirty bastard, whatever they yeah. right. And the challenge comes here, especially if you posted, you know, if you are taking more private pictures, and those are connected to your IP. So they actually have found the pictures you thought you stored securely on your phone yeah. and that and connected that to this type of hack. Yeah, so then there would actually be a real, that they actually would expose your type of information. Yeah, so it's more of uh, automated blackmail. Automated blackmail. That will be the first case where we see it. And we will also see, we, and we also actually see how people, how hackers get access to LinkedIn and review your private information and target attacks. So like, for example, uh, there is a, what we call the CFO attack, where they target the CFOs on different type of companies and send them a mail that, that they just need to reactivate their Microsoft Office uh, subscription. They click on that and the only thing that happens is that it pops up uh, your webmail, you log on, and they, they don't take your credentials, but they only insert a mail forwarding rule. So all the CFO's mails is sent forward, and sooner or later there will be contacts to the bank. Then they will craft a PDF, send it to the bank that looks exactly as the documents the uh, CFO is sending already, but with a payment somewhere else. So automating this type of attack with AI to extract the information, extract the mails, and so we'll be seeing more attacks faster and the way of managing that is in the same way as always start looking at how could we secure the identity the identity platform and the underlying infrastructure if you secure that you block those types of attacks and so that, that's how it go hands in hand in hand when we talk about AI so AI will enable things faster but will also lot, enable a lot of other things like uh, self-driving cars or like the type of robots that Isaac Asimov has been writing about for many, many years. Well, Asimov is mostly known for two series of books, the Foundation books, which is in the far, far future, the Galactic Empire and so on, and, and the uh, more near future books about the laws of robotics and the, and the kind of human empire and so on. Um, if you read all the books, you will see that there is connection between uh, between the two. Um, the laws of robotics: um, do no harm, uh, obey your master, and so on, are kind of, of basic ethical rules that seem very simple to follow, but to program them would be excessively uh, hard with current technology. So. In the near future, there, I don't think there is a lot we can learn from them. In the far future, 
paper. I mean, most people can't even really do these concepts of, of you know, do your harm, obey, obey your master, and so on. I mean, all, all these are ideals that we know from, from our own lives that we cannot follow it. It's not possible to follow it. So, so why, how should a, a, a robot be able to follow it when we can't even follow it ourselves? That would be very artificial intelligence. And, and as you know in the books, uh, often the, the robot freezes up because it doesn't know if it does A, it's bad things happen. If it doesn't do A, bad things happen. And, and uh, uh, you know, all the books are about the conflicts that come from these seemingly simple rules. So what can we learn? There is no easy solution. There is no free laws of robotics that will uh, save humanity from, from ethical problems. What about privacy and the state? Uh, first of all, uh, we need to t take a step back and say again, OK, the Internet of Things, fantastic. But what are actually the state of the global, the digital global state today? And we are digital creatures. We are digital entities out there. We have Fitbits and we have uh, online uh, statuses on our platforms or, or tablets or mobile phones or whatever. Everything is connected from the refrigerator to the jacuzzi to everything. That says something about where we want to be, I believe. So in the perspective of that, I believe that if we want that society, yes, the privacy the lines between the public, the state, or the core businesses and work life and privacy, they are blurred out. Uh, just prior 20 years, those lines were, were very clear. Not to mention the Berlin Wall. It's a very clear definition about ideology. But the ideology of today is a digitized one. So there is a blurred line, it's a huge gray zone where your work life, your privacy life, or your advertised life actually starts and ends. You, you, you bring your own device to work. You are connected in a reality world. On your lunch, you're taking picture of what you're eating. You go to the gym and take a picture of when you're working out. So privacy, the lines where it starts and ends are erased. that uh, AI in itself is very dependent of our, our self as humans. Yeah. How ethical are we? Mm. What is allowed? Mm. What is allowed but shouldn't be done? Mm. So, so, t take a simple gun. A gun can be used as a way of getting my will on a distance, yeah. beside a, using a knife, and those type of tools have been around forever, yeah. and waiting for something that actually need to be in front of you. Yeah. With a gun, I could stand further, further away yeah. and still get my will. But then again, if you have a gun, you could po point at me. Yeah. That's not a good, that's not an advocacy for guns, free guns, yeah. but it actually shows that a gun could be pointed two ways. Yeah. Yeah. So we need some regulations, but also some protection from the bad guys. Yeah, I would say what we are actually looking at is that when it comes to AI, uh, we should be looking more at uh, DRM, mandatory DRM systems that were actually said all my information is protected always and the only way a company could access to that is to for me to allow it and then they should be allowed to decrypt the information for that specific use. Yeah. So looking at the extension of uh, GDPR, nowadays I give my consent yeah. to them accessing information but they get a copy of my information. Yeah and then they could use it how they will or let it be hacked yeah. or whatever. I would say that we are looking at a future with some type of DRM or other type of function. So I would have to allow access to my information every time. Mm -hmm. So they can't only use it when they ask me. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what about the government access to everything? Well, <clears throat> I'm from the generation that said if you have something to hide, then you are yelling of any regulation that allowing the state to look into your affairs. But in true democracy, if we want true democracy and freedom of this, we need to actually, I believe, be more transparent if we want the government to be more transparent, because then the government needs to actually stipulate, in accordance to GDPR's main fundamental principle, why am I wanting to check your privacy? And do I have uh, a, a base in a law that actually allows me to do so? 
um, so I'm not afraid of the state looking into me as long as the state is for the people, by the people. And not all the governments are like that. Then we have a problem. But again, I'm not, I'm not afraid of that development because I also see a parallel world to this that everybody says the digitized world is the digitized world and the analog world is the real world. I say wrong because those two worlds are more and more migrating into one. And the digitized world, I believe in 50 years, I highly doubt that we have what we define today as countries. We have domains. So the global world will be a more digitized one. So the, the definition of state watching you, the big brother is watching you. I believe we need to redefine that, what we mean by that. Uh, and as long as we have regulators on a global scale that helps us protect the privacy, such as EU or United States or whatever, uh, I believe that yes, there will always be a sort of a state watching over the, 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 the privacy of the subject. But if we are one, if we are one coherent planet, then the baddies will have to fear the value of privacy and the others, no, 